Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, uh, we will be diving into the world of DevOps. So I'm creating a new series. This is a new series that I'm creating as part of your DevOps where I'll be covering interview questions uh, for the various DevOps tools. So in this particular session, we will be looking at 15 interview questions that you can expect as part of your uh, DevOps interview. Uh, so anyone who is uh, planning on attending uh, interviews on DevOps or you know if you're just eager to uh, understand uh, different questions that you can expect as part of your DevOps then you're in the right place. Once again before I start off with the session please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. So the first question we have is what is DevOps and how does it differ from traditional software development methodologies? Now, we know that DevOps is one of the uh, methodologies that we have, which we can follow to develop our applications. But how does it differ from other methodologies? So your DevOps, it is mainly a cultural and a collaborative approach, which mainly uh, emphasizes on the communication, integration and automation between your development team and your operations team. All right. So uh, the whole point of your DevOps is to have a collaborative environment and have a, a cultural environment which which uh, um, uh, emphasizes on having proper communication proper integration and then automation between your dev team and the operations team so this dev from your development and ops from your operations together is what we call it for your devops and we follow this throughout the software development life cycle so unlike your traditional methodologies the main idea of your devops is to break down the silos that we have and then promote continuous feedback. So we continuously get feedback from the ops team, from the development team, or from other teams who are involved in the software development. And also, if possible, automate any repetitive tasks, tasks which uh, helps us to give faster and more reliable software delivery. So that's how it differentiates from the traditional methodologies that we have out there in the IT industry. The next question we have is explain the concept of infrastructure as code and provide examples of popular IAC tools. Now, when we talk about your infrastructure as code, it is simply setting up and managing your infrastructure by making use of your code or some sort of automation. So we won't be setting up the infrastructure manually, rather we will be writing the code and then when we execute the code that will go and set up the infrastructure for us. And that is what we call it as your infrastructure as code. Now, uh, examples of your infrastructure as uh, code tools include your Terraform, which is one of the very popular and highly in demand tool that we have when we talk about your infrastructure as code. Then we have AWS CloudFormation, which can be used to set up your infrastructure on the AWS platform. We can also make use of your Ansible to uh, set up your infrastructure by making use of your code. The next question we have is how do containers differ from virtual machines and what benefits do containers bring to a DevOps environment? So uh, containers, they mainly share the same host operating system, unlike your VMs where we uh, create virtual machines. So basically we divide the hardware resources and then create virtual machines. But with your containers, it shares the same host operating system which makes it very lightweight and also faster compared to your virtual machine. So the startup time is much faster. Uh, they are very lightweight. It does not really need huge space to uh, work with. And also it gives you a consistency. So no matter where in which environment we are going to run the containers, it gives you the same consistency and also simplifies your dependency management. So when we talk about your containers, Docker and Kubernetes are the most po more uh, uh, popular tools that we have, which can be used to containerize your uh, applications. The next question we have is what is continuous integration and continuous deployment and how do they contribute to the DevOps pipeline? So continuous integration is uh, used when you want to integrate any code changes into a shared repository and then run any automated test. So when we talk about your continuous integration, as and when developers are pushing the code, we want to um, integrate all that code uh, together and then also run any automated test continuously. We call that phase as your continuous integration. Whereas your continuous deployment is deploying the packages. So once your code integration is done, once the automated testing is done, we'll go ahead and build the packages and then deploying these packages to your production environment 
we call that as your continuous deployment so this is where your ci and cd is introduced so ci is uh, basically getting all the code together running automated tests building the packages and then that triggers your deployment which will go ahead and deploy your packages to your production environment so both these practices which is your continuous integration and continuous deployment helps us to enhance the collaboration reduce errors and also speed up the software delivery process so uh, the time taken to deliver the software to the market is much faster it also reduces the amount of errors that uh, gets introduced if you're not following this approach Next question we have is explain the role of version control systems in a DevOps workflow and name some commonly used version control tools. So version control system is one of the very important tools that we have uh, if you want to maintain versions of your code over a period of time. So if you want to track your changes to your code or over a period of time or if you want to enable collaboration between multiple developers or if you want to roll back to a previous version of your code, we make use of your version control systems for that. And some of the very commonly used version control system includes your Git, which is one of the very popular tool that we have. We have SVN, which is a sub version. And then we also have your Mercurial. Moving on to the next question, what are microservices and how do they contribute to a scalable and maintainable in architecture in a DevOps environment? So this is where containers comes in. So microservices are simply your small and uh, easily deployable or independently deployable services which communicates with each other through apis so this is where containerization comes in so what we do is we containerize your application so we run them as small services and then these small services they can talk to each other uh, through your api so that is where we make use of your microservices now what does it do this helps you uh, in your scalability it helps in maintainability of your application as well. And this allows for independent development, deployment and scaling of your individual services. So now when we break down your applications into smaller services, uh, we don't have to, if you want to make any changes, we just have to concentrate on that particular service instead of concentrating on the entire application. So that allows for scalability and also maintaining the application becomes much easier. Moving on to the next question, describe the purpose of a Docker file and provide examples of Docker file instructions. So whenever we talk about building an image, we make use of a Docker file. So this Docker file is where we give all the instructions that we want to uh, create in, in terms of a Docker image. So whenever we want to create a Docker image, we make use of your Docker file. Now what are the instructions that we give? So some of the common instructions we pass is your from instruction, which is used to specify your base image. The run instruction which is used to execute the commands when we are building the image uh, copy instructions which can be used to copy files to your image cmd instructions which can be used to uh, run default commands when we start the containers there are many more commands but these are some of the example commands that we can pass in a docker file the next question we have is what is the role of automation in devops and how does it contribute to the efficiency of, of uh, software development and deployment so um, automation is where uh, it helps us to streamline your repetitive tasks. So let's say you have a task and you do this, you know, maybe uh, multiple times in a week or multiple times in a day. Now what we can do is we can automate that such so that, you know, we just trigger the job which will do the work for us instead of we manually doing it. So we can use this automation to streamline our repetitive task and this will also help in any manual errors and accelerating your processes as well. So the time taken to do the work is much faster. The error rates are reduced a lot and uh, we can also automate your repetitive tasks. So this ensures you have the consistency, you have the repeatability, you have the scalability and you have the efficiency in software development, testing and deployment process. The next question we have is explain the concept of shift left in the context of DevOps and how it relates to software testing. So shift left it can be used uh, when you want to integrate your testing in your development phase itself. So generally the uh, approach that we follow is we do the development first and then we do the testing. Now with your shift left approach, uh, we will be integrating your testing during the development phase itself. Now what this does is uh, it helps the teams to catch the issues much faster and then also address these issues earlier 
which can help in reducing your cost, your time uh, for fixing these defects if you're doing it at a later point, uh, which can you know cost you money and time as well. So that is where we uh, make we can make use of your shift left to simply integrate the testing during the development phase itself. The next question we have is what is blue green deployment and how does it contribute to the uh, achieving of zero downtime deployments? Now, so blue green deployment is essentially we will be maintaining two set of environments. Let's call it as your blue environment and the green environment. And then uh, the end users will be accessing one of this environment at a time. Let's say the blue environment in this case. And if you have to update any of these environments, so let's say as of now, the blue environment is on version 1.0 and the green environment is also on version 1.0. Now we have got a new version and we need to update. So instead of having a downtime, what we can do is we can switch the traffic of the end users to the green environment and we can go ahead and update the blue environment. So once the deployment is done and the, once we have done the sanity check, the uh, initial checks and if everything looks fine, we simply again switch back the traffic to the blue environment, which will have the latest version. And then we follow the same process for upgrading the green environment as well. And that is how we can achieve a seamless zero downtime deployments by directing these users to unaffected environments while we are applying the updates to the uh, other environment. So that is where we follow your blue green deployment or active passive deployment. So we'll always have a primary environment and we'll have a secondary environment and um, we will be switching the users traffic between these two environments. So whenever we need to upgrade an environment, we'll switch the traffic to a different environment and we'll again switch back once the deployment is done. The next question we have is how do you handle configuration management in a DevOps environment and what tools have you used for this purpose? So configuration management can be used when you want to manage and automate any of your infrastructure configurations. Like let's say for example you have 500 servers and you want to install some package or you want to copy some files or you want to update some configurations. We can make use of your configuration management for that. Now, when we talk about the tools, we have very popular tools like we have Ansible, we have Chef, we have Puppet, which can be used to maintain the consistency, enforce policies and also automate configuration management across your environments in your project or in the IT, um, uh, in your company. The next question we have is describe the importance of monitoring and logging in a DevOps culture. And what tools have you used for monitoring and logging in your previous project? So your monitoring and logging plays a very important role in the uh, DevOps culture. So we can use this to have a system wide visibility in the performance of your system. Any uh, if you want to detect any issues and also help in troubleshooting, we can make use of your monitoring and logging for that. So with this, we can create visualizations uh, which we can use to monitor how your system is performing. If there's an issue with any servers, we can use this to find out issues. We can maintain the logs, which can help in troubleshooting. So it plays a very important role in the DevOps culture. Now, some of the very popular tool that uh, we have is we have your Grafana, we have Prometheus, we have uh, ELK stack, we have CloudWatch. So depending on what you have worked on, you can mention those tools. Obviously, there are many more tools that uh, you might have worked on. You can definitely talk about those tools as well. The next question we have is what is continuous monitoring? And how does it contribute to the overall stability and performance of a system in a DevOps setup? So continuous monitoring is simply um, it's, an, it's an ongoing observation of your system metrics and your logs, which will help you to detect any anomalies. And this will ensure you always have the optimal performance. All right. So we are continuously monitoring the systems. We are continuously checking if there are any anomalies and we are continuously monitoring the performance of the applications to make sure everything is working as expected and we don't have any issues. Now this mainly helps in maintaining the stability of your systems, um, identifying issues very proactively and also improve the overall reliability of your uh, application. So the uh, experience, the user experience will be much better if your applications are uh, working as expected and we don't have any environmental issues. The next question we have is explain the concept of immutable infrastructure and its advantages in a DevOps environment. So uh, immutable infrastructure is simply uh, replacing an existing infrastructure instead of modifying them. So let's say, for example, I have a container where my application is running. 
Now instead of modifying that uh, container, if there's a problem or I need to update something, instead of modifying that container, I'll simply replace that with an updated container. So this way of working, we call it as your immutable infrastructure. Now what this does is this mainly helps in maintaining a, a consistency. It simplifies your rollbacks and also enhances the security by minimizing any configuration drift. So tools like your Packer, Docker, all these supports your immutable infrastructure where we're not going to modify the existing infra, we're just going to replace that with a new uh, set of instances. The next question we have is how do you ensure security in a DevOps pipeline and what practices or tools have you implemented to address security concerns? So any applications or infrastructure we take, security plays a very important role. The same we have in DevOps pipeline as well. So in terms of your security in DevOps, uh, we can involve practices like your code analysis, scanning your dependencies and then adhering to best security practices. And again, we have tools that we can use to uh, do this. So when we talk about your code analysis, we have Sonar Cube. For your dependency scanning, we have container security scanners. For best security practices, we have uh, OWASP, ZAP, and then container security scanners. So there are different, different tools that we can definitely implement in terms of um, maintaining the security in the uh, DevOps pipeline. So there you have it, um, uh, 15 interview questions that you can expect as part of your uh, DevOps interview. Um, this should be sufficient um, if you are preparing for the DevOps interview. Give a thumbs up if you like the video and uh, hit that bell icon to uh, stay in the loop. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more insights on uh, DevOps. Until next time, happy learning.